We started Feed the Future because we know that investments in science, technology, and innovation can help end hunger and poverty around the world. Feed the Future is about giving people the tools to move themselves out of dependency into a place of self-sufficiency, growth, and increased prosperity. Science and technology has helped mankind ever since the early civilization in the field of environment, medicine, most importantly in agriculture, like during the Green Revolution, where a billion lives were saved. We have a big challenge of increasing food production on a shrinking natural resource base with a much smaller environmental footprint. Breeders over centuries, they've been improving um, their materials. Over time, we've gone from the very first maize, Chiosinte, to the current domesticated maize. Farmers are always looking for high yields to ensure that they are feeding their families and they have surplus to sell. There's still a need for increased adoption of conventional technologies. But conventional approaches alone cannot solve all agricultural problems. Innovation and biotechnology are important in several ways. Biotechnology and genetic engineering bring in an extra level of variation within the makeup of crops. Within Feed the Future, we've made investments in research and in some cases biotechnology a priority so that farmers have choices to use the types of technologies that can help improve their, the nutritional status of their children and families, help protect their crops from low rainfall years, and help uh, improve the value of what they're producing so they can earn more money. We are partnering with Feed the Future in some of the most important staple food crops in the Sub-Saharan Africa. We are working to develop BT cowpea resistant varieties. The BT cowpea project was born out of that very challenge where insect resistance could not be identified within cultivated cowpeas. Rice is, has a number of challenges on drought, so we are developing water use efficient rice, nitrogen use efficient rice, and one resistant to high salinity. They are now going to introduce um, provitamin A into millet, and they've done that for bananas, and they've introduced weevil resistance into sweet potatoes. Biotechnology is already showing great science of helping farmers, and this technology has actually increased the profits that farmers have been getting by increasing yields by about 15 to 20 percent, then they are able to reduce poverty, they are able to take their children to school, they are able to access health care, they also regain their dignity. It's not just enough to develop new technologies that can resist drought or help crops resist insects. You need a supportive policy environment in order for those technologies to reach the farmer. We believe that countries and farmers should have a choice about the kind of technologies that are available to them to solve their problems. We need regulatory systems that are cost effective. They should be rigorous, but they should be science-based regulations that look at the evidence on a case-by-case -case basis. We also have to make sure that there is an enabling environment for the very exciting biotechnology-based varieties and innovations in animal science, that there is a regulatory system in place and developed by the government, enforced by the government, based on scientific principles to keep the, the country safe as well as productive. This is the first time we've seen extreme poverty go down on every single continent, including Africa. Part of why that's happening is this reinvestment in agricultural research and in nutrition. We need to act today to invest in new technology, new partnerships, business partnerships, engagements with civil society, and by measuring real concrete results, we think we can help end hunger as we know it.